Why did why did this film stand out, and why the heavy praise from you on Oppenheimer, please? Well, you know, we're talking about Christopher Nolan, boys. You know, one of the great filmmakers of our generation with the Dark Knight trilogy and everything else he's done. Uh, so we knew this was going to be an event film, right? But, you know, it o- there's only a handful of directors in the world who could say, I want to make a three-hour movie about the father of the atomic bomb and put it only in theaters and shoot it in 70 millimeter. Mm-hmm. And Hollywood and the world says yes, because he does a great job. You know, one of the things you'll notice, Killian Murphy is the, the actor who plays Oppenheimer. He's going to get an Oscar nomination. But one of the things you'll notice, boys, is the cast, you get in this movie is like in the old days where every single supporting role is Robert Downey Jr. Yes. It's Emily Blunt. There's Gary Oldman showing up for one scene because actors want to be in movies like this. They're all taking less money than they normally would because they want to be a part of something that's a generational film. You call it one of the best movies of the century. How many scenes or what are the scenes that still stick with you? Uh, I can't believe the, the recreating Trinity that scene, how they pulled that off. And, and I know a lot of people point to the stomping of the feet, the scene at the gym after uh, the bomb has been dropped and the reaction to Oppenheimer and the like little uh, rally. Yeah, let's talk a little bit okay. about that. So for folks who haven't seen it, they literally built the town in Los Alamos because this was a two or three year, the Manhattan Project. So they wanted all these scientists, but then their families would be there as well. So it was a full town with a general store. It almost looked like one of the old West towns that you built for the movie. So they had this meeting place, and this is the genius of Christopher Nolan. So they're celebrating, but they celebrate in a in, – it basically looks like a Friday night pep rally. You can even see the basket uh, in the background, mm-hmm. you know, for basketball games. They're stomping the bleachers as if they just beat the, you know, the in-state rival for the regional championship. But what they're celebrating, of course, is two things, you know, what, what is going to be the end of the war, but also, of course, that meant uh, the loss of lives of hundreds of thousands of people. So, you know, it's this great all-American moment, and it is, and it is a triumph. It's, you know, it's also a tragedy, and Nolan captures all of that in one scene. Yes. Okay, so on a gambling network, I think the most important question then today, Richard, is <laughs> uh, worthy of a bet right now at plus 150 on best picture or not, not yet because it's still too soon? Well, we really should have bet on it a few weeks ago, boys, yeah. <laughs> before it came out. Um, you know, I think here's the thing. It has all the ingredients of a best picture. It's a historical biopic. The, the Academy loves that, right? It's a huge Hollywood, you know, original film, not a sequel, not a franchise. Mm. And they love box office. You know, you don't get, you know, this reminds me, very different subject matter, but you know, 25 years ago when Titanic came out, it was a huge blockbuster. It got all this buzz, but it was also, it's a really well-made film. You know, you see Oppenheimer and you know, it's going to get best picture, best screenplay, best actor, best supporting actor for Robert Downey Jr. All the technical categories, right? Editing, sound. So it's going to get probably 11 to 12 nominations, which to me, and it it, it makes it the front runner for sure. Who could, uh, Who's the challenger? Because I thought Downey was fantastic as well. Who can challenge Downey and also Murphy? I, you know, I think it's too early. We got a lot of okay. films coming out. Scorsese, Scorsese's That's got right. his film coming out, uh, which will be, uh, you know, which is also equally uh, highly anticipated. Killers of the Flower Moon is three hours as well. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I hear that it's a masterpiece. And the supporting performances, we again, you know, you see so many of those in October, November, December. Sometimes people say, oh, it came out in summer. Are voters going to forget about it? I don't think in this case they are, guys, because this is going to keep playing in theaters. You know, here in Chicago, on a Tuesday night, the downtown theater showing Oppenheimer was sold out. Guys, on a Tuesday night, Mm. 10 p.m. showing, which means people were getting out of the theater on a school night, on a work night, if you will, at 1.30 in the morning. They're lining up to see Mm -hmm. Oppenheimer. Yes, well said. Yeah, Uh, I'm I'm guessing... Uh, Richard, that yeah. the the film's going to be re-released, right? Probably like November, December, sometime as well, to make that late Oscar push. For sure, that's a great point because that's what they used to do back in the day. You know, The Godfather would come out and then they'd re-release it in theaters. You know, the big movies like that. These days, you know, a lot of times like, oh, it'll go to home video. It will eventually come to home video. But again, that's the power and the clout that Christopher Nolan mm-hmm. has. In most cases, you know, even even a lot of our biggest movies, guys. Within a month, 
you can you can call them up on your TV for five ninety nine, or you can get them on a streaming mm-hmm. platform. That's that's not the case with Oppenheimer. It's going to play throughout the summer. And great point. At some point, you know, maybe right around the holidays, they'll put it back in theaters, and it'll do another twenty or thirty million. When we watched the movie uh, during the previews, they showed the the lioness on on Paramount. Uh, this looks yeah. good, and you reviewed it as well. What, what did you think? It's on, yeah, it's on Paramount. What did you think of this? Yeah, for folks who haven't heard about this, because it kind of came out the same week as, as Barbie and Oppenheimer. This is the TV show we're talking about, uh-huh. and it's from Taylor. It's from Taylor Sheridan, the same guy that gives you Yellowstone and 1883 and all those series. Uh, and this is kind of inspired by a true story about an all-female operative team. Uh, working in the Middle East because there are certain situations where a a female operative can go undercover more easily than a man can. And Zoe Saldana, speaking about somebody who's been in a lot of blockbusters like Avatar, she's the star. Um, It also has Morgan Freeman, Nicole Kidman. So this is a big prestige project, but it's it's just a really – it's a military thriller is what it comes down to. It Even though good. it has that A-list kit. Yes. Yeah, it's, really, it, it's another one of those TV shows that looks like okay. a movie. They spend so much money on these shows. Did you love the bear? The bear, the, the people say season's two better than season one. Bear's amazing. Uh, I got to do a quick plug, too. My huh? sister's the prop master on the bear. Oh, so nice. All those forks and knives and all that stuff, she puts that together. So it's really fun while it's being made. And they film it here in Chicago. All of it in Chicago, guys. Very legitimate representation of the city. But the cast, you know, talk about a cast, Jeremy Allen White and, and all the regulars. But then this year they had Jamie Lee Curtis in a guest role, John Bernthal. Olivia Coleman, Oscar winner, actually contacted them and said, I'd love to do a couple of scenes. I love this show. So they flew her in from Great Britain just so she could have like one scene in The Bear. If people haven't seen it. It's one of the best series about the, the, the restaurant industry and the behind the scenes, but also just really funny and dark and uh-huh. brilliantly done. Yeah, my, my wife is a, uh, she was a longtime chef and cook in, you know, really good restaurants out here in Las Vegas. She thinks the show is outstanding. Uh, she and I also went to Barbie last Friday. Uh, what did you make of that motion picture? Yeah, I loved it. You know, it's funny because I think people are getting all worked up about Barbie, as you know. First of all, Greta Gerwig's another great director, mm-hmm. and it's just fun. You know, it's got some social commentary, but it cracks me up when people are like, Oh, you know, they really kind of diss Ken in this movie. And I'm like, Ken's always been an idiot. Ken has always <laughs> been a moron boy. What did Ken ever do? Yeah. You know, Barbie was a, st- Barbie started off as a model, but then Barbie was a doctor and Barbie was a writer. And, you know, Ken just stood along on a beach waiting for her to get done with work. So I can't believe people are like actually offended on behalf of Ken. He's a moron, you know, and it's just, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun movie. And it, I actually think, it's great. You know, people say, you know, should I see a double feature? I say, no. See Oppenheimer on a day where you're not going to see anything else. It's too heavy. It's too mm-hmm. much. Yeah. And then go yeah. to Barbie when you just want to kick back and watch, I think, something that's – it looks gorgeous. It's a great-looking movie. Margot Robbie's, you know, who else, right? I mean, had, you had to play it, yeah. And, uh-huh. and, and Ryan Gosling, right? I mean, the casting is great. It's funny. It's got, you know, some fun musical numbers. And, it, again, guys, it's – Everybody knew it was going to do well. It's doing. It's going to make a billion dollars worldwide. A billion with a B. Jeez. The Barbie movie. Tell us about your podcast and what's coming up and what you're looking to uh, review. You know, we've, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up. Uh, there's a new – I'd love to tell you guys about great sports stuff. Netflix has got the new a new uh, edition of Untold. That's the documentary series that goes into various kind of scandals, and interesting stories. They've got a full episode on Johnny Football. Remember Johnny Man? Oh, yeah. Um, they've got a whole episode on Balco where they revisit Victor Conte. Uh, and they got one on Jake Paul. And you know what? You say what you want about Jake Paul, but it's really interesting to see how this guy went from YouTuber sure. to a guy that can fill arenas for boxing matches. So Untold on Netflix is, is, is really good. Uh, and there's a movie about the Beanie Baby craze that's on Apple TV Plus right now called The Beanie Bubble. You guys remember. I know you collected mm-hmm. beanies when you were a kid. Don't lie. Yes. No, you're right. <laughs> All right. So we checked it out as well. Great spot as always. Thank Victor. you. Thanks for the time. Talk to you soon, guys. Thanks. Visit VEASAN.com to get current odds. Listen for free. Find showtimes and download VEASAN's sports betting podcasts.